Here we are with uh, Professor Michael Fishback. You're the author of Black Power in Palestine. Mm -hmm. And my question is, you s wrote something really interesting, which is really news today, about uh, Martin Luther, Dr. King's uh, vision that the only way, or a statement, or belief that the only way you can get Middle East peace is if you create a prosperous Arab world, a prosperous Palestine. In some ways, Kushner's peace plan is part of this vision. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. No, I asked Jared Kushner whether he followed this about King's, you know, vision, but he didn't seem to have a response. Um, what would you say to that? Well, there's actually a long history going back to an American named Gordon Clapp, who uh, in 1949 was sent uh, as part of the United Nations Conciliation Commission for Palestine, the UNCCP. He was an American, but the United States is one of the three member states on the UNCCP. And he was sent over to look at, and develop some sort of region-wide economic plan that could assist the 750,000 Palestinian refugees, but at the same time provide some uh, kind of economic development opportunities for the entire region. Mm. Uh, the logic was, as far back then, that the refugees are not going back. Israel will not let them back. Mm. And therefore, uh, integrating them, or, or the term was settling them, resettlement in the surrounding Arab countries with an economic boost for them and the surrounding Arab countries was the answer. So actually Kushner's plan, or even mm -hmm. you could argue in some ways even maybe Martin Luther King Jr.'s, is really kind of the CLAP mission 2.0. Mm -hmm. There's a long-standing tradition of this, which Palestinians and other Arabs have criticized for decades as mm -hmm. essentially an economic band-aid and avoiding the political question, which is the what the refugees claim is their right to return, or in today's world, a Palestinian state, et cetera, et cetera, uh, in favor of economic development. I, I witnessed also, I covered the Oslo peace mm -hmm. talks, was on the Palestinian, Jordanian, Israel thing, and we had Rabin, we had Arafat, mm -hmm. you had King Hussein, and they all had a very brave courage and, and, and vision on the peace, but they had no clue about the economic consequences. And during the peace talks, I think the economic well-being of the Palestinians went down 85% during the talks. Yes, things like uh, things like standard of living, GDP. Yeah. GDP. Certainly, uh, Paris had talked about you know a, a med, uh, a dead med canal mm. connecting, and, and, and you know they were qualifying industrial zones, which still exist. But certainly for the Palestinians, it, Palestinians would argue, and I would agree, that it was precisely the lack of, of political Sometimes. movement yeah. that stifled economic development. Yeah. Things like uh, and then, of course, there were security issues and bombings and mm. border checkpoints. But certainly Martin Luther King Jr. took his cue from his aide, Andrew Young, who in turn referenced uh, what was then Pope John XXIII's encyclical, wow. uh, Pacem Terras, Peace and the Earth. And stemming from that, came up with this idea that the way to solve the Arab-Israeli conflict was essentially uh, Kind of a decaf political version. Mm. If, you know, if, if the Arab world would recognize Israel, but but he said, and re reminding King in '67 was faced with lots of urban upris uprisings yeah. in black communities. Yeah. The idea being that what he called intemperate remarks and violence stem from poor economic conditions. So that if those were addressed, he argued in public, not privately, I'm mm. not so sure, but in public he argued if that was addressed. Palestinian grievances perhaps could be ameliorated. But one of the things that's sort of developing as we see is King wanted to be the um, I don't know, open broker, fair broker in the, in the dispute between the Palestinians. He was a preacher and stuff. We're seeing that his legacy could be taken over by Mark Morial of the National Urban League. You know, USA could go through the Urban League directly. Um, they're great Americans, and they would be welcomed by both the Palestinians and Israelis. And is that something you had any? I, I don't know where the Urban League stands today but they had a fairly strongly pro-Israeli stance in the mid-late 70s. Mm. Uh, uh, they went back and forth. They had a fellow named Wilfred Usury who made some pro-Palestinian comments, but certainly uh, by the, t by the uh, early mid-70s, they, they were pretty solidly, and of course, Urban League was moving in, in a conservative direction anyway. So I'm not sure they're standing today in the black community, but uh, overall, this idea of economic development will kind of uh, smooth the rough edges of political grievances 
has a long track record, but it hasn't been a successful one. And so I would advise people like Kushner to at least consider the, the history of that. Yeah, but economic development can only be done by business leaders, not by government. In Marshall Plan, we had CEOs who'd been World War II or in Korean War vets later. These people had been in war. They knew what war was, but they were also corporate leaders. Now we have this whole generation of people who've never been in war, you know, the kids who've never been in war. So they don't really know the importance of economic development and jobs to defeat war. Right. Or well, uh, I mean, on I mean, you know, yeah. business leaders. Certainly, the 20th century has seen a lot of nation states. And I don't necessarily admire them that have had tremendous economic buildup yeah. in the state sector, not yeah. relying on private. I think that one of the game changers, and this is something that does factor into mm. the Kushner plan, is that Gulf states like the Emiratis and the Saudis have more or less washed their hands of the Palestinian mm. issue. Uh, there are various reasons, and they, w whether Palestinians like this or not, they're basically more or less on board with the U.S. and with Israel in seeing Iran as the next threat. And S Syria is collapsing, Iraq essentially collapsed, uh, North African mm -hmm. countries like Libya and Algeria that once supported the Palestinians. I mean, uh, if I were Palestinian, I'd say, unfortunately for us, mm -hmm. the Arab will to do something political vis-a-vis -vis our problem with Israel is dissipating, and quite the opposite, as you suggested. Business initiatives, particularly involving the Gulf, um, you know, Israelis are now welcome in, in Qatar for the, yeah. the Pan-Asian Games. So um, in some ways, the Palestinians are in a real tough spot in terms of who actually has either the political, diplomatic, or, or economic heft to really push for their political uh, redress. So I'm not sure in their shoes. Yeah, because the, the economic situation in Palestine was just in Bethlehem. It's horrendous. Huge unemployment, economic depression completely. And then Israel, Tel Aviv, has its own problem on the opposite side, but just as bad. Overheated economy. It's more expensive to live in Tel Aviv than New York and more you know, expensive. They don't have the wages to live it. So their cost of living has gone out mm -hmm. and next door is there. So. Right. Well, you know, the effects of, of neoliberal um, and the idea that at least the Palestinians used to be pre-Oslo as a source of cheap labor. Yeah. Not saying that's a good thing, but certainly the idea of working in Israel, yeah. um, the, the freedom of movement and goods. So, um, but at least on the political end, um, I, I don't know what's the future of the Kushner plan, and certainly his father-in-law now has... But I talked to Kushner about that, and he didn't seem to know that King had the original vision of this plan, which he might have gone by fluke or luck. Well, with all due respect, people don't always look at history these days, <laughs> and I think it, even more than King, it would be the CLAP mission, the, the records of which are still in the U.S. archives. I've looked at them. Gordon CLAP? Yeah, Gordon C. CLAP. He was the head of the TVA, the, the Tennessee Valley Authority. Also a new dealer. As I recall, he was, yeah, he went way back, and um, mm. he wrote, you know, an official UN report, but I did see some unofficial things he wrote actually by hand, mm. where he said, this idea of development and not political uh, movement is going to be mightily unpopular, he said, with the refugees, and we should just be aware of that. Mm. It was sort of prescient. Prescient? Okay, thank you. Thank you.